What's up everybody, it's Wyatt with WC Fish and we're back with another video and I'm coming back to you from my house. It's been a long time since I've done one of these but this weekend is perfect for it. We have really, really cold weather, whole lot of wind, it's really unfishable and that's coming from me. So I wanted to go over what I use at the inlet and hopefully increase your guys' odds to catch fish. So whether that be live bait, artificial, anything like that, I want to go over what I do and what I see a lot out there that will help increase your odds to catch fish. I'm not going to go over shark fishing at the inlet. If that's something you guys are interested in, please leave a comment down below. I can film a whole video on that really easily and I'd actually rather do that one at the inlet so I can walk you through everything that needs to happen. But all in all, the goal here is to get you educated. So say it's your first time going out to the inlet, you're ready with the right gear, the right rigs, to have the best shot possible to catch some fish. Let's get into it. All right, the first thing I wanna go over is the rigs that I use at the inlet that I've seen that give me the most success. And if this is your first time going to the inlet, chances are, if I were to take a guess, you'd probably start out with live bait. So that's the one I wanna go over first. And believe it or not, I've seen a lot of people really overcomplicate this. It's a very, very simple rig. And I'm gonna show it to you now. So it starts out, with a 2-0 hook, which is commonly what I use, like to use for live bait, especially for smaller stuff like shrimp, mahara, pinfish. If I'm going bigger like mullet or big pinfish, I might size up to a circle hook. But for most general purposes, that 2-0 just J hook is a great starter. And then it's paired with some 30 pound mono. I like to run a loop knot on all of my hooks across the board because I think it gives a better action. It's not necessary, I really don't think it is, but I think it helps my odds and it makes me confident in what I'm throwing, which is the biggest thing. And then we've got two pinch weights on here, really, really simple. So I go anywhere from an eighth of an ounce all the way up to maybe an ounce of weight if it's there's a lot of current or if I'm get, having trouble getting it down. All in all, that's something you really gotta play with to figure out where the fish are biting, what, how much weight you want to use to get it down further. Fish might be up top, fish might be down at the bottom. It's really something you tweak while you fish and it'll help better your odds. And then the mono leader that we're using, we have about two and a half feet of mono and then it's tied to just a really simple double uni knot to my main line, which in this case on my live bait setup is 20 pound braid. You can use more than that if you want. I really don't think it's necessary. But this is seriously it. It's just a double uni from your main line to your leader and then a pinch weight of some sort and then just a hook down at the bottom. Like I said, I like using a loop knot down at the hook. You could run a cinch knot, you could run a uni knot, anything you want, I really don't think it matters. But that loop knot is what makes me the most confident. And then of course, bigger baits, size up your hooks. But overall, I like this size hook for almost everything I do. All right, so we covered live bait and I just realized I forgot one thing. I know I said I was using 30 pound mono for that rig. Consistently, that's what I use the most across live bait, but it's worth noting that if you're using bigger baits, you might wanna size up to say maybe 40 pound mono. And then on really clear days, there's sometimes where even at 30, they don't wanna eat. So I'll start sizing down to trying 20 pound. Chances are, if you hook a snook, you're gonna get frayed off on it. That's just part of the game. But all in all, that's really the way I like to run it. I like to start at 30. If I'm running heavier baits, size it up. If I'm running lighter baits, drop it down. And then of course, if it's really, really clear and you can't seem to get a bite on mono, it might be worth trying out floral. I mess around with it here and there, but overall I don't really see a difference, but you might have a different outcome. So now let's go into artificial. And when I say artificial, you guys have seen what I throw. It's either these being bucktails, or these, which I call grubs. So the rigging for this is really, really simple. So uh, running under the assumption you're throwing artificial for snook and redfish, really easy. I'm using the same 20 pound main line from the same setup, a double uni knot again. This time it's 60 pound mono and then tied to a loop knot to the jig. I would argue that the loop knot is actually very critical for the jigs and the grubs because what it allows it to do 
it allows that jig to pivot easier on that knot, which gives it more action in the current and more action when you bounce it. I think that's a huge thing for convincing these fish to hit these because you got to think about it. There's so many people out there. There's hundreds of these things flying by their faces and you got to get the right one to convince it to eat. So I will use everything I can to my advantage. That's really it. It's really simple. If I'm throwing for snook and redfish, always going to be 60 pound mono. I don't really like running any heavier than that. I will not run lighter than that because with these, you're bouncing them across a lot of rocks. You want that strength and abrasion resistance, especially if that snook chokes this jig down, which they are known to do. It will stop you from getting frayed off, but you have that extra added bit of, bit of strength and 90% of the time, you're throwing jigs at nighttime, so hiding the line and concealing it isn't really all that critical. But yeah, I mean, it's a really simple rig. That's just the way I like to run it. I don't like anything under 60. And then of course, the last thing I wanna go over is jig weight. So if I'm snook fishing, I usually start out with an ounce and a half jig, but I use anywhere from an ounce and a half up to three ounces. And that all depends on the current. If it's moving relatively slow, an ounce and a half is more than enough. You want to make sure you get it to bottom. You want to make sure you're hitting. If I can't feel that, I'll up the size to two. And then if the current is really, really ripping with a lot of wind, making it tough to get feel, that's when I'll up to those three ounce jigs. I try my best not to use them because the heavier you go, the faster you have to fish it. And I'm a fan of fishing them slow. You'll see some guys out there that will throw nothing but three ounce jigs because that's how they like to fish it and it works for them. So all in all, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but it's all mostly the same thing. And the last thing I can tell you, if you're gonna be throwing jigs and grubs, is to not show up with just a couple of them. The bottom of that inlet is covered in rocks. If you're fishing these right, you're going to hang them up. You need to be fishing right against those rocks, which inevitably you're gonna hang them up you're going to lose some jigs, you're going to lose some line, but that's all part of it. And we put up with it to catch these fish because it's worth it. So I would show up with a bare minimum of eight of these jigs. They're relatively cheap at tackle stores on the way down there. They, I don't fish with less than eight. I've had nights I've gone out, lost none, and I've had nights I've gone out and lost 10 of them and been very upset. So you don't want to show up with not enough tackle to figure it out and then catch fish. You want to show up with enough that you can lose some, not be stressed out about it, and increase your chances of catching fish. Now, if let's say there's tarpon out there, and I've seen that, that's where I'll up my size game a little bit. I would usually not throw anything under a two ounce jig. That's where I break out the swim baits on occasion. But I run 80 pound mono instead of 60 because I want it to be stronger. And then at the very top, I run an FG knot instead of a double uni because it is stronger. Now, if you watched last week's video, you might have heard me mention that I was running a double uni knot on that tarpon because I thought it was going to be snook and redfish and not tarpon. It held. It still works. That knot is still capable of catching big fish, but I have so much more confidence in this FG knot than I do any other knot. And really, all of this boils down to what are you confident in, what makes you positive you can catch fish, because that's a big part of this game, is being confident in your tackle, confident in your rigs, and confident in what you're doing. All right, so now that we've gone over the rigs that'll help your chances the best for finding fish at the inlet, I wanna go over the gear that I bring with me and that I suggest you use or something to that effect. So if you're like me, you want one setup that can do both. You wanna be able to live bait fish and then switch to artificials if that's what the snook or the redfish want. You've seen my Saragossa 6000 right here paired with my nine foot surf casting rod. And in my opinion, this is easily the best all around combo for fishing at the inlet. It's light enough that you can still throw live bait, feel when you get a bite and set the hook and still has enough backbone behind it to be able to throw your jigs and your grubs and etc. So all in all, if I go out with just this one, I can do any of the top style of fishing that we went over today. Now, say some bigger fish show up, like we see some big reds or there's tarpon out there or anything like that. That's where you'll see me move up to the reel right here that you've seen, my VSX 200, a comparable reel is anything in that 8,000 size range. And I also increase the rod length. I have a 10.6 6 
surf casting rod. And really that's where I bring that one out. I do not live bait fish with that because it's so heavy, but when it comes to these big fish out there, I'm almost always going to be throwing artificial and I'm usually throwing heavier lures than I would with this for snook in the inlet. So for this one, I'm usually throwing an ounce and a half, two ounce jigs. With this one, I'll throw at the minimum two and throw up to four ounce like swim baits. So I like having a little bit of extra weight for it. I can cast it further and that reel has more drag and the rod has more backbone to lay heat to these big fish, whether that be the big red fish or tarpon, and I can absolutely bring them in. But all in all, if you want something for just snook and redfish, getting it figured out at the inlet, doing live bait and artificial, I really recommend this. If you are going to go artificial, honestly, I would stay with this. It's a 6,000 size reel and a nine foot surf casting rod is killer. Now, if you want to only live bait fish, you can absolutely drop it down from this. I use, I've used a 2500 Daiwa BG on a seven foot medium rod. I would definitely recommend something a little bit higher than that. I got broken off a lot trying to do that, but something in that 4,000 range and then a medium, medium heavy rod in that seven to eight foot range would be killer for live bait. It's just a little short and a little underpowered when it comes to jigs. All right. so. Overall, that's pretty much what I wanted, wanted to cover in this video, just basic rig tying and having adequate gear to be able to fish. The next thing is for you to get out there and start trying to fish. There's some big things with that. So if you've noticed, I fish the inlet side a lot and believe it or not, there is a lot of technique to it, but the biggest thing is organization among the people around you. There is current moving through that inlet at a very, very fast rate. And there's certain ways you have to fish it depending on which way it's moving. So my biggest tip to you is if you're coming out for the first time and you want your best odds of catching fish, the best thing you can do as soon as you get there is sit back, notice the people that seem to know what they're doing. They have the rigs similar to what I've shown you how to tie. Just sit back and watch how they do it for a minute Chances are you'll see them moving around, you'll see them casting certain places and then moving with it. Biggest thing, just watch that, get an idea of how the organization works and how everybody actually fishes together side by side so they're not wrapping each other all the time. And once you get a general idea, then move in, take your chances and start trying to fish. It'll really help you in the long run because you won't be wrapping people up, which takes a lot of extra time. It's a lot of hassle and a lot of stress. And better yet, you'll stay out of our way. <laughs> That's one of the big things at the inlet. It can get heated. People can get very frustrated and upset. And a lot of it spawns from somebody not necessarily knowing exactly what they need to do, not thinking they're in the wrong, not knowing they're in the wrong, but in a way they might be because they're not as educated on how to fish the inlet in the current and the way we like to do things out there. So a huge thing, just sit back and watch and it'll keep you out of everybody's way, which makes better fishing for all of us because you get lines in the water longer, you're not wrapping people, and eventually you'll get that thump, get that hook set, and land a fish at the inlet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like, drop a comment below, and of course, subscribe. I come out with videos every week. I would really appreciate it. Keep fishing. Enjoy it.